production of Traveling Kansas, Scott County, is underwritten in part by a grant from Scott City Travel and Tourism. Plan your next trip by visiting www.scottcityks.org. Scott City Travel and Tourism, available with all the attractions and events, including the Rod Run on the third weekend in August and Wimmy Diddle Arch and Crafts the last Saturday in September. Western State Bank, a quality tradition you can trust. Wheatland Broadband, we're here when you need us. Live, local, friendly customer service. Scott County Hospital is proud to support the citizens of Scott County and the surrounding communities. Pride in our community, pride in your health. Scott County Hospital, leading you to a healthy future. Fairly Companies and their employees are proud to be a part of Scott County. L&M Western Tire Service. JNR Car and Truck Center, bringing you their best every day. And Fairly Feed Yard, where customers are our priority. American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. Farm Credit of Southwest Kansas. Ag, your business, our business, partners. Branch locations in Scott City, Garden City, Dodge City, and Liberal. Scott Co-op and their staff are proud to say Scott County is their home and they truly enjoy serving you. From grain storage and marketing to the service station and fuel delivery, their goal is to serve better every day. Scott Co-op, owned by the people we serve. In all America City, Scott City is poised for a vibrant future and exciting possibilities. Scott City, a community that embraces family values and education with a thriving business environment. Information available from Scott County Development on its community website at scottcityks.org. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, a Touchstone Energy Partner. Join us for a visit to see places of interest and attractions right here in Kansas. This is Traveling Kansas. Well, I'm Katie Eisenhower, the Economic Development Director for Scott County, Kansas, and we welcome you to our town. That's my job, is I get to say hello to the people who choose to move to our community and talk about one of the finest small towns in all of Kansas. It, it could be a much worse day. Scott County was known as the birthplace of Kansas. The tribe of Pecuri Indians came here in the 1500s and established a Pueblo. Uh, we currently have a state park in that area. That's many, many years ago, but that was the first uh, established inhabitants that, that were not nomadic here in the state of Kansas. We're located on Highway 83. There's over 3,000 vehicles a day pass through this community. Um, there's a vast amount of commerce moving up and down the highways. Uh, Highway 83 runs from Mexico to Canada. We're on a major north-south uh, corridor. Okay, Scott County's been blessed with uh, pioneering spirit from the beginning. In the early days when the settlers came out and homesteaded 160 acre tracks, uh, they were uh, finding excellent soils and later on when they developed the irrigation, uh, we had some suspended alluvial uh, uh, pockets of water that people irrigated from and in the last uh, 80 years we've relied on the Ogallala Aquifer to augment our normal crop agriculture. Between crops and livestock in this community uh, are the, the two big uh, drivers of our economy uh, and employment. Our unemployment's very low. We have uh, vast opportunities for people to move to our area to, to work in the, the agricultural industry besides the service industries that have developed to service agriculture here. The agricultural economy here in Scott County is strong and vibrant. Uh, we currently rank second in the state in the total dollars of agricultural production between crops and livestock, and I believe 32nd in the nation. Uh, we continue to vertically integrate and value add to what we do produce. Uh, there seems to be constant growth and progress in that area and more need for employees. Our current cattle on feed uh, capacity is around 500,000 head at any one time. 
I work for KLA Environmental Services. We are a division of the Kansas Livestock Association. And what makes us kind of unique is we're actually a technical services type of a company. We uh, provide engineering, agronomy, and environment, <coughs> excuse me, environmental consulting services. And we do this primarily for livestock owners who have to meet a growing number of regulations, um, not only on the environmental side, but also ha having to do with water and water rights. We spend a lot of time with that too. The reason we're here in Scott City is that uh, this is kind of the heart of the cattle industry. Uh, here in Kansas, we have roughly 6 million cattle within the state, roughly twice our human population. Um, about 49, based on the latest statistics, about 49% of all ag receipts are generated through the, the cattle industry. So it's pretty significant, not only in agriculture, but to our state. And uh, for the type of work we do, this is kind of the, the heart of the industry here in Western Kansas. Um, the three uh, largest counties in terms of cattle inventory are Haskell, Finney, and Scott. Scott County is second in cattle on feed and third in total cattle numbers within the state. So this is just a logical place for us to be. It's where many of our clients are. So we had an opportunity to build an office here in Scott City, uh, basically with, uh, uh, with the generosity of some local families. And uh, we took advantage of that opportunity and built the office in 2010. We've been here ever since, and as far as what we do and how we work with people, it's been great. It's been so good to be so close to our clients and our members, and just being able to be more responsive to their needs. Our county population uh, has gradually grown until uh, the early 80s, and then it declined over about a 15-year time period. Uh, slightly, we lost maybe 10% of our population, but since 2005, our population has been climbing. We're estimated to be over 5,200 people. Our, our low in the 80s was around 4,600, 4,700. So it, it hasn't been a, a very rapid decline or increase, but we are steadily growing. It's a very uh, diverse workforce, we have very low unemployment here. There's many job opportunities. Our employment is as low as anyone in the state. So this county has a lot of capacity to expand and to even, you know, increase the economy and the economic engine that the cattle industry is even more. But we're concerned about some of the constraints that we have. Um, some is just getting adequate labor here. And in our, in our business, we need technically based people, people with engineering degrees, agronomy degrees, other specialized degrees. Um, we're doing everything we can to let people know the great opportunities that we have here and to get that education and <clears throat> especially if you're a Western Kansas native to come back home and use that education. We have a place for you and we have the opportunity to do that. This is what the challenges that we face are really important. So, so many of them are related to water. We're involved in a lot of things, water recycling, water treatment, uh, changes in water right laws to just keep ourselves viable and effective and efficient, and we need good quality people to help us do that. In my first few weeks on the, on the job, looking through uh, our staff list, one of the things that stuck out to me, the amount of staff members we had graduate from Scott City and return to come back and teach, 30% of our staff our graduates from Scott County Schools. Um, they'll joke with you a little bit on uh, never being able to get out of town, um, but when you really look deep into why that, why that is, um, it's, a, it's about pride in the community. It's about uh, um, uh, the success they had as a, as, a, as a youth and wanting that for the next generation of youth. A term in, in education, as far as in administration of education, is, is we talk a lot about growing your own staff. And what that means is uh, we, we want to hire teachers, uh, we, we want to encourage teaching at a young age. It, it ties back into the college career ready standards, uh, setting kids on a path early and making sure uh, we're providing them with what they need to, do, they need to know to um, uh, make a wise choice in their, in their post-secondary career. And so as I look at the staff that we have 
the staff we have who graduated here, um, I'd like to go back and thank the administration at that time for inspiring them uh, to want to come back and be a part of something great. We're compelled now to do that. I know there's a number of kids leaving us who are going off to be a teacher, and I'd like to talk to them and, and, and tell them, you can come back and, and, and make an impact, whether it's Scott City or, or another small town, but you can make an impact on kids and, uh, and develop the future of education. And uh, in times like this, we've got to have uh, quality people doing that. I grew up here and grew up on the farm, and my parents just kind of made me appreciate all the things that this place can offer and um, had the chance to come back and farm with my dad and looking at Scott City it was a great place to play and raise kids and um, hopefully just be able to contribute to a lot of different things and um, just that, uh, experience a lot of aspects that small town life and I think Scott City uniquely can provide. Looking at future kids I mean there's um, just a great community that's real supportive of you know a lot of different activities not just sports or school but you've got 4-H and church youth groups and um, just real supportive any anything your kids want to do I think they can find a spot you know and so hopefully we can find their strengths and put them in whatever works for them and just help them achieve whatever they want and I think just a lot of opportunities that they can make work. Well, I think Scott City is just, it's, I don't want to say a haven, but it's definitely unique in our perception of things. Um, a term that I like to use, and I've heard a lot of people use, is just value added, where we take the normal and somehow we just make it into great things. I, I don't know how we always do it, but it seems like there's always a group of people that want to make the best out of every situation. And so um, I think the, the outlook is positive and I think uh, if we work on getting our kids the enthusiasm that we were raised with, we can give it another generation of the same mentality. I, the, the growth we've seen is directly related to the growth of the town, um, the growth in business opportunities, uh, uh, the hospital, um, those kinds of things. People are wanting to get here uh, to be in Scott City for a reason. Um, and I don't think that's the same in all, in all, in all communities in Kansas. I think sometimes in, in communities in Kansas, um, uh, uh, you land someplace uh, whether you want to or not, and, and you just you kind of you have to be there, I guess. Um, I, I think there's an attempt to, to get here. I think the expectation of, of, of high achievement is very evident in Scott City. When I came to Scott City, I, I, I wasn't coming just to be a superintendent. I was looking for an opportunity for my own family. And um, as I looked from my professional point of view as, a, as a, an administrator in education and looked at the opportunities and the high expectations Scott City School, Scott County Schools have, um, I wanted my kids to be a part of that. Uh, I didn't want to put them in a bad situation by any means. And um, uh, what we've been able to, uh, to, to uh, be a part of and to achieve here as a family has been outstanding. And so I, I realize why people are coming back. Um, they, they've set, a, um, uh, set a, a high bar for high expectation and, and uh, those of us coming in new to it have, are, are able to take, a, um, uh, take something out of that. I think we've been blessed with uh, vision makers. We've had people that, um, the feed yards are a great example. Uh, up until about five years ago, the entire feed yard industry in Scott County was owned locally, family owned hundreds of thousands of head of cattle, uh, several hundred jobs. Uh, we enjoy good school systems. Uh, I'd like to think we enjoy a, a good form of government. And we have a lot of tradition. Uh, and so uh, that's probably why I came back as much as anything. So I uh, spent my time in other places and have raised a family here, and now I'm a grandparent, and they live here, and I'm perfectly happy. Production of Traveling Kansas, Scott County, is underwritten in part by a grant from 
Scott City Chamber of Commerce welcomes you to our community. A progressive chamber, 144 members strong, offices located just one half block east of Highway 183 and Highway 96. Information on local attractions and events on our website at scottcityks.org. First National Bank, know the difference between having a bank and being a part of one. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant dealer is proud to be a part of Scott County. Home comfort you can rely on. Look no further than Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems at Turner Sheet Metal. Scott City Travel and Tourism. Plan your next trip by visiting www.scottcityks.org. Scott City Travel and Tourism. Available with all the attractions and events, including the Rod Run on the third weekend in August and Wimmy Diddle Arch and Crafts the last Saturday in September. Wheatland Broadband. We're here when you need us. Live, local, friendly customer service. Scott City Chiropractic Clinic. Heartland Foods, hometown proud. JNR Car and Truck Center. Security State Bank, member FDIC. Rodenbeek Green Agency, your trusted choice independent agency. Serving Scott City since 1949. Western State Bank, a quality tradition you can trust. Scott City Health Mart caring for you and about you. Proud to be a part of the community. Scott County Hospital is proud to support the citizens of Scott County and the surrounding communities. Pride in our community, pride in your health. Scott County Hospital, leading you to a healthy future. The business environment in Scott City is unique in today's uh, agricultural environment. Some communities are seeing sharp declines in population. We've been maintaining and, in fact, growing since 2009. It feels great, but it is no accident. We're growing because we made some decisions as a community about a decade ago that we did not wish to be just merely a town of survival. Our town of 4200 wants to thrive and be self-sufficient and provide every great opportunity it can for its citizens. We have entrepreneurs that are continually developing new projects and, and products and expanding. The, the businesses are mainly locally owned here. There's just a few outside ownership of our businesses. The business environment in Scott City is unique. If you drive down Main Street in Scott City, you do not find vacant buildings. In fact, we struggle to find available buildings for businesses that wish to start. Our uh, entrepreneurship is alive and well. In fact, we support a youth entrepreneurship program that is part of the curriculum in our high school because we know that if we help put a fire into the entrepreneurial spirit of people who are teens, then when they become adults, they may well open a business in Scott City. That's our goal. We actually started in our basement. Um, I started selling purses and jewelry, and we had a huge response from our community, and so we rented a small space uptown and um, kept going there. We, the, the people of Scott City supported us like crazy. So at, right after that, we decided to open a store in Garden City. And shortly after that, Manhattan, Hayes, Salina, and, and recently Wichita. So over the years, we've had a ton of support from our chamber, our SCDC. We feel completely supported in anything we do. And they actually facilitated uh, helping us win, in 2012, Retail Business of the Year. So we were just so excited. We got to go to Topeka and accept an award. And it got tons of exposure. And we couldn't have had that without the support from Scott City. One of my very favorite things is that people from Scott City visit all the stores all across the state and they're always so proud and they come in and they say we're here to support Nicole and we recently had a fire and we lost our business. Um, we've, we've since re relocated and built ourselves back up but the day following the fire our Garden City store just got filled with people saying we're here for Mark and Nicole, we're here for Mark and Nicole. So our community just loves us, supports us and and are so proud of our success. It's a great place to be. We have a, a, a different uh, philosophy and atmosphere here in this community. We're, we're progressive. Uh, if, if the community wants something that will improve their quality of life, they vote for it. 
and, and we financed those and, and done a very good job of, of keeping our taxes as low as possible for future expansion and, and development. New Life Market is an allergen-free milling and food processing facility that we located right here in Scott City. We founded this business on consumer demand for allergen-free food products, which includes gluten-free, dairy-free, peanut-free, and we're a very large milling and food processing facility. One of the great things about locating in Scott City is the community support that we had for this business when we founded it. Another great thing is the employment uh, base that we have right here in Scott City. And it's been fantastic. We've been able to bring in some wonderful employees here from Kansas State University, other universities throughout the United States, uh, highly educated millennials that really, really enjoy living right here in Scott City, Kansas. You know, one of the things that we do is value-added agriculture, and we connect the value-added portion of the production of these specific grains, white sorghums, and we mill those sorghums into a higher value flour for people with those food allergens. There's several different advantages to living here in Scott City and having our business here. One of those, and the most important one, is the people and the support of those people right here in Scott City. Well, we're just uh, like any other business. Um, we've really thrived here in Scott City, but we, of course, want to grow our business. And in order to do that, we need to add employees. We have a facility. We have the ability to do that. But one of the most difficult things is drawing people to western Kansas to live in a rural area and do the kind of work that we do. And uh, one of the big obstacles is housing, just having a, a sufficient availability of quality housing, affordable housing. Uh, you know, people's expectations, especially if we're hiring college graduates, are that there's uh, some decent housing available. And that's a challenge in a small town. And that uh, is one of my motivations to be involved in the community and to be involved in our local chamber of commerce and especially our economic development group, uh, Scott County Development Corporation. Um, we just all need to work together to improve those resources, especially our housing resource. And we need to make this a community that's a place where people want to live. It, it is a family-friendly community. It's a great place for raising a family. But we need to just continue to make it a better place so people want to come here. And so that's, uh, you know, not just my challenge through our business, but for our whole community. But it affects all of us, and it doesn't matter whether you're in engineering, you're in agriculture, or you're a merchant downtown, it affects all of us. Some would view that our housing shortage in Scott City is a negative. We don't. We view it as a positive because people have actually chosen our community to live, to bring up their family, to start a business, to come to work, and we embrace that. But we do know that we need to work diligently to increase our housing opportunities for people, both new and for rent. So we welcome those folks to still give Scott City a chance. We'll find you a home. This was a new step and a new direction and you know, it was, it was good. We um, have enjoyed being here. It's been a, it was a good move. So our people are, are very friendly here. We've, um, that's been, you know, one of the good things. When you have a good church and, and um, you know, that, that helps a lot, so. We have a, fortunately have a wonderful community foundation, which is just rather recent, and we work well with the county. Uh, in this, in most uh, rural communities, the county has a little money because they have the, the tax base. We all seem to get along. Uh, we can go, uh, they'll come over and then we'll have a joint meeting with them occasionally, just whenever we feel like we got some stuff in common. And it works. Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, there's some dissension, obviously, sometimes, but it, but it works. The Scott Community Foundation, we were, we were actually started out as a healthcare foundation back in 1987. Reverend Orson Evans started our foundation, uh, started out with bake sales, started, out, started doing, doing car washes, your basic fundraising things. Uh, in, two th in year 2000, we actually began uh, the process of transformation and changed in the fall of 2000 to a community foundation from a healthcare foundation. At that time, we had about $300,000 uh, in assets. 
as of 2015, we are at over $8 million. So that is kind of how our community has grown with some of the generosity and the giving nature of our community has, has expanded significantly over the last 15 years. The Community Foundation right now, we are just finishing up the Veterans Memorial um, here in Scott County. Uh, we have been involved in the Scott County Library, the Kansas Livestock Association building, the new field house for the football team, the clubhouse for the golf course. Those are some of the, some of the bigger projects of what we're standing in right now. The Scott County Library, we helped and raised uh, over $250,000 in tax credits. Our board members uh, were very instrumental in getting that done. The, the mission of the Scott Community Foundation is to make Scott, Scott County a, and the surrounding areas a better place to work, live, and raise a family. Uh, I think we've done that significantly in everything that we've done. We, we also give away $50,000 a year in scholarships, $50,000 away in grants to various organizations, various entities. Uh, we try to promote the kids, the kids who get the scholarships. We want them to try to come back to our community and and be a part of that giving force and be a part of that business force so that we can help develop and, and keep growing our community in the future. I think what excites me the most about the future, especially in Scott County, is we're a very progressive community. There is always new ideas and new projects that our community is coming up with. Every project that I've been a part of is not something that I've done. It's something that a community member has walked into my office and come in and shared an idea. And next thing you know, we're, we're at the finish line. And so every, every year I have people who come in and want to do things and we try to do as much as we can to help with different projects. And I think that's the thing I look most forward to is that I never know who's gonna walk in my door the next day and what's gonna come up and what new project I'm gonna be working on next. We've uh, renovated our schools. We, we have a uh, uh, very recently constructed law enforcement center. The $24 million hospital uh, is, is working extremely well. The, the finances there look much better than any other hospital here in, in, in our area. Um, I grew up here in Scott City, um, returned here uh, almost 12 years ago. Um, had trained in Wichita before coming back. Uh, my family's all here. My uh, my wife's family's here. So it was it was really coming coming home when the time time came to come back. Really, in the last three to four years has been when the big changes have happened. Um, we've always been, I, I think, a pretty progressive medical community. Um, we've offered services that uh, some of our surrounding communities don't. Um, uh, but in the last three years, we've added a surgeon, which has really opened opened things up significantly. We've been able to offer those services to the people in our community and the surrounding surrounding area. And we do have a sleep clinic that we did not have. That's really been within the last year. Uh, previously, if, if we were working somewhere for sleep apnea, you had to go to Garden City or elsewhere. And uh, so the sleep clinic has definitely uh, been a nice addition as well. And that's just uh, in our little annex off to the to west of the hospital here as well. So I think because our staff, our nurses, uh, you know, everybody in the hospital has some type of local tie for the most part. Uh, it is, it's, it's a benefit because the patients know you, they trust you, they have a relationship with you beyond, beyond you being their health care provider. The, the downside of that is it, it is, it's tough sometimes, it, it really is. And, and uh, um, I've had a lot of people who said, gosh, I used to babysit you when you were, you know, three. And I go, really? <laughs> you know, was I good? I don't know. But, but I, I've got a little lady at the hospital right now I'm caring for. She's 98. She was my first grade teacher. And that's, that's, uh, that's uh, it's hard because, you know, it's hard to see her suffer and hard to see her go through what she's going through. But she thinks that's the coolest thing in the whole world, that she was my first grade, first grade teacher. And so she has to tell everybody that when I, when I go in there. So we asked for a lot when we asked for the hospital to be built. Um, you know, there was a lot of things that had already been done in the community. The high school had been just been remodeled and redone, totally gutted and redone. Um, there had been a, a uh, the uh, jail had just been built, LEC had just been built. And, and the community stepped up and uh, it made it through on the first ballot. And um, that really says a lot about our community, that they care about their, uh, about the infrastructure of their community, they care about the future of the community. And, and so it's, I've got some friends who are docs in other communities that are really struggling uh, to get something passed and through even though they need it. So we, we feel definitely very blessed that the community was able to 
able to step up and get this done. Production of Traveling Kansas, Scott County is underwritten in part by a grant from an All-America City, Scott City is poised for a vibrant future and exciting possibilities. Scott City, a community that embraces family values and education with a thriving business environment. Information available from Scott County Development on its community website at scottcityks.org. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, a touchstone energy partner. Fairly companies and their employees are proud to be a part of Scott County. L&M Western Tire Service. JR Car and Truck Center, bringing you their best every day. And Fairly Feed Yard, where customers are our priority. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant dealer, is proud to be a part of Scott County. Home comfort you can rely on. Look no further than Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems at Turner Sheet Metal. Scott Co op and their staff are proud to say Scott County is their home and they truly enjoy serving you. From grain storage and marketing to the service station and fuel delivery. Their goal is to serve better every day. Scott Co-op, owned by the people we serve. Spring brings long hours for farmers, from dawn until dusk every day. There's no such thing as downtime. American Implement is available anytime with the equipment you need to save time. Thank you, farmers. You're here for us. We just want you to know you're here for us. We're here for you anytime dawn to dusk. American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. Farm Credit of Southwest Kansas. Ag, your business, our business, partners, branch locations in Scott City, Garden City, Dodge City, and Liberal. Scott City Chamber of Commerce welcomes you to our community. A progressive chamber, 144 members strong, offices located just one half block east of Highway 183 and Highway 96. Information on local attractions and events on our website at scottcityks.org. First National Bank, know the difference between having a bank and being a part of one. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. I welcome you to see what all we have to offer in Scott County, Kansas. We have a lot of historical attractions as well as adventures available from Buffalo tours to boating at the lake, to our beautiful museum and Jerry Thomas Gallery. One of the adventures we offer is the Buffalo Tour. You load on the back of a trailer, you go out in the buffalo field, right in the midst of them, they come up to the trailer, they feed them, um, so they come running sometimes and they get very close to you, but you're in a safe distance. A lot of people enjoy to see the buffalo calves uh, out there with their moms. They also enjoy to hear the buffalo noises. It's kind of a different than what you would ever expect to hear. For more information on the Buffalo Tours, contact Richard Duff for Duff's Buffalo Tours. Scott County is also part of the Western Vistas Historic Byway. Along the byway, we have a kiosk that tells all the points of interest along it. Keystone Gallery is a small gallery that has artwork as well as fossils that the owners Barb and Chuck have found through their travels. The Western Vistas Historical Byway is the only historical byway in the state of Kansas. Although it is historic, there is some scenic routes also. It's a different kind of beauty, but it is more well known for the historic sites and museums along the route. Hello, welcome to the El Cordaleo Museum. I'm Charles Evans and we'll visit for a few minutes about what's going on here in Scott City and the El Cordaleo. Well, when we take a tour through the El Cordaleo Museum, what we find is a wide experience with exhibits from prehistoric fossils through the native people to the records of some of our pioneer ancestors. Some of the things that we know about this area of Scott County the fossils probably came from an area about 60 to 80 million years ago, and we have evidence of those here in this museum. An inland ocean once covered this land. Uh, we believe that part of Kansas was under probably about 900 feet of water at one time. Monument Rocks is one of the areas that's near here, located about 18 miles north and east of here. 
It's a chalk formation that stands about 50 feet above the prairie along the Smoky Hill River. And it was a landmark for the Butterfield Overland Dispatch, which traveled to Russell Springs and parts west. There's a display that depicts the Plains Apache Indians who were encamped here in the 1500s. They lived off the animals and the country around, and they settled near water holes or streams, and they were farmers principally. On the plains, they lived in teepees, which were smaller than the ones which were used after the advent of the horses, which came later. One of the great ruins which is located here is the ruin called the El Cortalejo Pueblo. And that's the one after which this museum was named. It was discovered near Scott State Park in 1898 by pioneer Herb Steele. We know that the Taos Pueblo Indians out of northern New Mexico came here around 1650 and built the Pueblo. Uh, they came to, to build another home to escape some of, the, um, some of the slavery that the Spanish had put them in. Uh, in northern New Mexico. So they came north to the plains and, and knew of this site uh, along Ladder Creek up where our state park is now located. They established and built a Pueblo, a, a complete settlement up there. Then they, they settled there for about 20 years. Several Pueblos uh, were in that area. They were one-story structures. And the difference uh, from what they are in northern New Mexico. In northern New Mexico, they are two and three and four story structures. They were one story structure here because there was more than one of them in the valley. They didn't need to build them high. They had plenty of room they could spread out. So it was only a one story structure. But there were no outside entrances. The Pueblo was 50 by 32 foot, and there were six rooms, entrances through the roof. They had to use a ladder to go up on top and then a ladder to go down inside. As you can see behind me here, we have a replica of what the Pueblo looked like above ground. Now the, the ancient foundation that is out there at the state park is two to three foot below this uh, where the, the above ground foundation would be. Now if you go to the park to take a look at the Pueblo ruins, what you will see is a man-made out of cement native stone foundation about two foot high above ground but it is built right over the original foundation and built just like this Pueblo would have built above ground here so that people can walk around it, read the interpretive signs, and see how each room was laid out. Uh, some of the things that we like to share with people uh, were a spring-fed lake. Uh, it's kind of unique in western Kansas. Um, a lot of the other state parks will have their water draw down through irrigation. We're lucky enough to say that we're, we're always full. If, if we're low, we're maybe two inches low. Uh, probably one of the, the th top three things here that we like to share with people that come here to see is our swimming beach. We were recently voted uh, one of the top 50 beaches in the United States by USA Today. It's a great honor for a little tiny lake. Uh, recently, we were nominated as one of the top 100 scenic parks in the United States, and we were 23rd out of 100. That's a, a great title to have. We have something here for the whole family. Uh, we do have 57 campsites. We also have a eight and a half mile multi-use nature trail that we're very proud of. It's been recently renovated. The fishing here is fabulous. We do have courtesy docks. It is a fishing only lake. There's no motor, motor boating recreational activity allowed, so it's a nice quiet lake. The, the whole area of this park is 1,280 acres, and we will average 145 to 155,000 people a year, so it is extremely popular. Revenues increased every year, so to us that tells us we're doing a good job on improving the place or making it more inviting. Uh, we do have a concession here on the beach, so you can come down and rent a paddle boat, a kayak, get a pop, candy bar, fishing license, camping permits, fishing tackle. It's very convenient for people that are using the beach. Um, it's, it's a small park, so you can drive around the lake in about 10 minutes. It's great scenery everywhere you go. The scenery changes. And I can pretty much guarantee that you'll see turkey, deer, 
ducks, geese, every time you're here. It's its, its own little ecosystem in western Kansas. People drive down 95 and really don't expect to see what they're, they're, they're gonna see. It's just, it's jaw dropping. For the history buffs, there's a lot of natural history around here. The steel home also, uh, it's the, the pioneers of this area. They moved here in the late 1800s, uh, Herbert and Eliza Steel. Their dream, or Eliza's dream, was to see this as a, a place for everybody to enjoy for recreation. The steel home is really a unique home in the sense that it is made of quarried sandstone from the surrounding areas. Most of the houses of that period of time were either dugouts or they were sod houses. Very few houses were made of stone. So that made it a unique type of, of, of a home. The other thing that's unique about the steel home is the fact that it is a bi-level or a split-level house. Very few homes were ever built in that area with that kind of a design. Actually, the home hasn't changed much from 1893. There's been a little lean-to porch that's on the front of it. it. Wasn't there when it was built, but other than that, it's in amazing condition considering yeah. the age of it. It's actually used as a museum now. So people can go in and they can see what a period home of, the, you know, of 1893 was like. The Civilian Conservation Corps uh, came in and built the dam as a project. They came out of Atwood in 1929. Uh, it was first called Lake McBride. I believe one of the businessmen in Scott City, a banker, Mr. McBride, was one of the first investors or helpers to get the project going. Uh, it was quickly I think the dam broke in 31, so the CCC camp had to be moved back from Atwood, uh, reconstructed the dam in 33, then it became a state park. One of the springs is visible. Uh, it's located at Big Springs, which is at the, the south end of the park, close to the office. You can actually see the water coming out of the ground down a riffle, which is really cool. We're conveniently located north of Scott City, 13 miles. Um, take 83 out of Scott City, you'll take the 95 junction, take your right to our entrance. You can also come off I-70 from Oakley and go south on 83 and you could take the north 95 junction which will also take you to the park office. Fishing is incredible, um, crappie, catfish, sawgye, walleye, largemouth bass. We also stock trout. It's a, it's a great park to bring your kids, uh, ample shade, it's quiet. It's a, it's a family type atmosphere. Also, any of the information that you're interested in, you can get on our website, which is Kansas Department of Wildlife. Uh, you can Google that or you can go to KDWPT and you can go to the State Parks link and find Lake Scott State Park. Uh, they have information on our cabins, our utility sites, uh, the amenities that we have, uh, and also numbers that you can contact us if you have any questions. Production of Traveling Kansas, Scott County, is underwritten in part by a grant from Scott City Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Proud to be a part of the community. Scott City Chiropractic Clinic, Heartland Foods, hometown proud. JR Car and Truck Center, Security State Bank, member FDIC. Rodenbeek Green Agency, your trusted choice independent agency, serving Scott City since 1949. Western State Bank, a quality tradition you can trust. Scott County Hospital is proud to support the citizens of Scott County and the surrounding communities. Pride in our community, pride in your health. Scott County Hospital, leading you to a healthy future. In all America City, Scott City is poised for a vibrant future and exciting possibilities. Scott City, a community that embraces family values and education with a thriving business environment. Information available from Scott County Development on its community website at scottcityks.org. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, a touchstone energy partner. Fairley companies and their employees are proud to be a part of Scott County. L&M Western Tire Service. JR Car and Truck Center, bringing you their best every day. And Fairly Feed Yard, where customers are our priority. Scott City Travel and Tourism, 
Plan your next trip by visiting www.scottcityks.org. Scott City Travel and Tourism, available with all the attractions and events, including the Rod Run on the third weekend in August and Wimmy Diddle Arch and Crafts the last Saturday in September. Wheatland Broadband, we're here when you need us. Live, local, friendly customer service. We also have an exhibit of the last battle, the last Indian battle, which was fought in Scott County, and that's near Scott State Park. The Northern Cheyenne Indians of Wyoming had been moved to a reservation in western Oklahoma. And in 1878, after several years of living in the arid desert area, they were weakened by sickness and malnutrition, and Chief Morningstar, known to the whites as Chief Dullknife and his men, decided to break away. They made it up to an area north here near Scott Lake where they were confronted by the U.S. Cavalry. During a short skirmish, Colonel Lewis, who was the only one of the uh, United States Cavalry who was, was wounded, uh, died in the night and the Indians slipped away. They broke into two groups. One of them was uh, surrounded by the military and captured in Nebraska, and the other group reached the Black Hills where they were safe from capture. The battle was actually known on the archives of the War Department in Washington, D.C. as the Battle of Punished Woman Fort. Uh, we have an exhibit here in our museum that, that shows what the canyon looks like. Uh, it has a natural cave where the women and children and elderly were, were placed to protect them during the battle. Um, the opposite hills has rifle pits where uh, the Cheyenne hid and are still visible. But when you came through the museum, you can take a look at how the canyon uh, is pretty much looked with the cave. We have some photographs of the, the two uh, chiefs that led to Cheyenne, uh, Chief Dullknife and, and Chief Little Wolf. Uh, we also have a, a picture of, of uh, some of the members of the tribe that was captured after the battle. Uh, and when taken to Dodge City to be put on trial. So all of this can be, can get your, your uh, history uh, on guided tours or wander through on your own. We have uh, plenty of information on it. And then to get the history here and, and the, what it was all about, and then you can go up to the, to the actual site uh, just before you go inside the State Park on Highway 95 and take a look at the actual, actual site. You can see the actual cave where the women and children were. You can go across to the opposite hills and take a look at the rifle pits that are still visible that the Cheyenne left there when they escaped this, this area. One thing that is very important to this area is the name of Maria Daguerre, who was the lady who founded Scott City. She and her daughter, Ida Eastman, were the first permanent settlers in Scott County. They arrived in 1884. She uh, organized the first town company and helped lay out the town. We would invite you to come and take a tour personally of the El Cordaleo Museum. It's located on West Highway 96 in Scott City. The hours are Tuesday through Saturday, one to five. Come and enjoy this wonderful exhibit of Western Kansas. I'm Jerry Thomas. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection in Scott City. I am very proud of the facility. We had the grand opening here in May of 2010. Very honored that the state of Kansas and uh, the wonderful people of Kansas helped to uh, build this wonderful 5,000 square foot gallery and facility to house my collection of artifacts, world-class artifacts, and art uh, that has been distributed all over the world. Uh, what we feature here is the original paintings, Native American, cowboy, western artifacts, Custer battlefield artifacts, and we house the finest collection of Punished Woman's Fort memorabilia in existence. Uh, very honored to have it here. Uh, it's a unique stop on the trail to explain how the West was settled and the Pioneer West. It's very uh, unique out here in Western Canada. We, uh, we've discussed the Smoky Hill River Valley, 
you hear in so many instances from Davis with Harper's Weekly in 1867, he wrote that uh, the, the monuments stand above as if they were masonry created by the hand of man. Uh, we celebrate a unique landscape out here that has history, heritage, and beautiful landscape, and we're, we're very, very lucky to have it. I'm very, very honored that uh, the, my work has been distributed worldwide. So we've got, uh, had some very unique honor, honors that celebrate uh, our history and heritage here in uh, Western Kansas. My inspiration started mainly with wildlife art. And I created duck stamps and went into the history and the heritage of the West. I, we have approximately uh, 60, 70 original paintings here that some of them are on loan from generous donors that have uh, let us have them from across the globe. Uh, some of them are pieces that I have kept, such as the piece that you see here, uh, Land of My People. And uh, we very honored to have those, but approximately 60 to 70. There are thousands of artifacts. Uh, I'm very, very honored to have the artifacts and uh, the things that I have acquired over the years that we feature the artifacts in the images or in the uh, bronze work. Very ha proud to have in the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection the only known image of Lieutenant Colonel William H. Lewis, the last officer to die in the Indian battles, Indian wars in Kansas. Uh, I was able to come across a photograph, I painted his image, and then I was very honored to acquire his personalized sword that he carried probably even in the battle. Here at the gallery, you can see featured William H. Lewis, some of the accoutrements. How I found the image was way back, uh, young Mary Leaf, six-year-old girl at Fort Dodge, wrote that she and her father had acquired a photograph of William H. Lewis. I noticed that in a book. Like a detective, I started searching for it and was able to acquire it, and it is the only one that, uh, that is known. We're very proud to have it here. It's very unique that we are affiliated with El Corleo Museum. We are both with the Scott County Historical Society. Uh, we share the love and passion of, of course, Scott County, but we celebrate uh, the timeline over in the museum and then we feature the artwork and the artifacts that tell the unique story here. Uh, we are on uh, Highway 96 at the west end of Scott City. We look forward to seeing you in Scott County, Kansas. All the information on the attractions can be found in, on our website. Information also for lodging and dining can be found there. We hope to see you soon. Though we are a town that prides itself on being progressive and innovative, it doesn't mean that we're without our problems. In 2010, Scott City vied for the title of All America City. During that process, we collaborated across sectors to assess our challenges and find solutions to those problems. We didn't come away with the gold in 2010 because we focused on our infrastructure. So we did a gut check of our people and what is going on in Scott City and changed the dialogue in 2011 to go back to the National Civic League to vie for the title of All-America City. All-America Cities are not cities that are uh, friendly and clean and, and, and just Midwestern. What they are, are communities that have challenges, look at how to solve those challenges with the help of their people, and put it into practice. And that's what Scott City is. We have people wanting to move here because of our school system, because of our lack of crime problem, because of our weather. What's not to like? So whether you're coming through town for the weekend or looking to relocate your family or your business, we encourage you to stop by the Chamber and Economic Development Office at 113 East 5th Street, just east of the intersection of US 83 and K96 highways. We're the friendliest building in town. <laughs>
production of Traveling Kansas, Scott County, is underwritten in part by a grant from Scott Co-op and their staff are proud to say Scott County is their home and they truly enjoy serving you. From grain storage and marketing to the service station and fuel delivery, their goal is to serve better every day. Scott Co-op, owned by the people we serve. Spring brings long hours for farmers, from dawn until dusk every day. There's no such thing as downtime. American Implement is available anytime with the equipment you need to save time. Thank you, farmers. You're here for us. We just want you to know you're here for us. We're here for you. Anytime, dawn to dusk. American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. Farm Credit of Southwest Kansas. Ag, your business, our business. Partners, branch locations in Scott City, Garden City, Dodge City, and Liberal. Scott City Chamber of Commerce welcomes you to our community. A progressive chamber, 144 members strong, offices located just one half block east of Highway 183 and Highway 96. Information on local attractions and events on our website at scottcityks.org. First National Bank. Know the difference between having a bank and being a part of one. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Scott City Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Proud to be a part of the community. Scott City Chiropractic Clinic, Heartland Foods, hometown proud. JNR Car and Truck Center, Security State Bank, member FDIC. Rodenbeek Green Agency, your trusted choice independent agency. Serving Scott City since 1949. Turner Sheet Metal, your Bryant dealer is proud to be a part of Scott County. Home comfort you can rely on. Look no further than Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems at Turner Sheet Metal.